Hey, Jumpstart Nation. I'm heading to a place here so we can do our jumpstart. Uh, I was listening to Flashpoint by Kenneth Copa Ministries and getting an update on this whole vaccination, forced mandated vaccinations, the whole COVID thing. And um, <clears throat> wasn't didn't watch my time too well, but something that the Lord said to me, and I'm going to pull up here and we're going to jumpstart. Something the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord just whispered in my heart. He said, Byron, he said, it's good to stay informed. It's good to stay updated. It's good to stay active. You need to be active, need to be a patriot. He said, but if you feed on too many different things, you're going to become so dissipated and so uh, scattered in your thinking. You're going to be thinking, t you know, in so many different directions that you're going to become dis distracted from acting on the Word of God. He said, it's good to be informed, but you need to be first informed about the Word of God. And to not forget, Jumpstart Nation, we can't forget that the Word of God is first and foremost the most significant truth that we have. It's the most significant news that we have is what does the Word of God say? And so... I'm going to pull up here in just a second, so I can't look at your responses, but good morning, everybody. I'll get to say hello to you as soon as I pull over um, where I was going to go. My normal, one of my normal spots I go to has been occupied and uh, is occupied again today. So I'm looking for an alternative location, and I think I'm just going to try this over here. But uh, one of the things that the Lord said to me yesterday, and we talked about it yesterday, he said, Byron, you've got to, st you've got to understand that you can talk to these things, talk to them, not merely about them. And man, that has been liberating. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from y'all uh, about how important it was. We have one of the uh, regular jump starters on here. Uh, they they uh, messaged me last night. And uh, said, I have listened to that message three times. I have literally listened to that message three times. That we need to speak to it, not about it. And you know what? I'm going to up that. I'm going to begin up in that in my own life. And I'm going to continue to speak to things. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, you don't know how to speak to things, uh, give me a call or whatever. Or give me a text. and I, it, Basically, it's what we've been doing now since March of last year. is taking the Word of God and declaring the truth about it. Taking the Word of God and declaring the truth. Uh, we need to be speaking the Word of God. And very often when we uh, people, a lot of believers talk about... Excuse me a second. I'm getting my tripod set up here. A lot of times when believers talk about faith, okay, they think it's about somehow having enough faith to move God. And uh, man, that flash of revelation came to me yesterday that, it, that um, we are not trying to move God. God already moved, okay? Uh, and so we're going to talk about talking t to things, including talking to your body. You have authority to do, to do that. Talking to COVID, you have authority to do that. Hey, Pat, it's good to see you. Good to see everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Pastor Rhea, Rhea uh, will normally be on here, but uh, we're watching Lincoln. She had to watch Lincoln again today. Uh, his mom is uh, has a meeting at school, and so uh, we're, we're tag-teaming back and forth. And, man, she's on fire with the Word. God has her buried in the book of Romans right now. Man, it's a move of the Spirit. There's just some powerful things happening. She's literally just buried in the book of Romans. She's teaching that in our Bible school uh, on Monday nights. We have, a, we have a ministry school here at Victory on Monday nights. We may bring it online uh, for some of you that would like to go to school and be, and be taught, trained in ministry. I don't know. Give us some feedback on that. We don't know how we do it, but it's, it's, a, it's a paid Bible school. And anyway, she is buried right now. Hey, Brother David, good to see you, man. Love you. Okay, uh, in the book of Romans, and the Lord's really birthing something strong in our heart about it. And uh, we're excited to see what God's going to do with it. But talk to it, not about it. Just say that out of your mouth. Talk to it, not about it. 
I'm telling you, man, that's so powerful. That's so necessary. And so like, uh, like I said yesterday, what the Lord began to show me, showed me this about three years ago when I was doing a Bible class uh, uh, in a library up in Cincinnati, Ohio. As I was driving there, the Lord said, how many times, the Lord said to me, he said, how many times did I ask the Father to heal somebody? When I was ministering to the sick, when I was casting out demons, uh, when I was dealing with storms, deadly storms, and uh, when I was dealing with uh, food shortages and shortages with loaves and fishes and all that, he said to me, how many times did I ask God to, to heal somebody, ask God to cast a demon out of somebody, ask God? I said, uh, let me think. So I got pulled the car over. Uh, this is about three years ago, and I could not find anywhere where he used his faith toward God to get God to do something. And he said, how many times when I ministered to the sick was it a horizontal faith? Using my faith, the faith God had given me, and authority, and I spoke to people, spoke to diseases, spoke to demons, spoke to storms. I said, Lord, I can't find one case except when you laid Lazarus from the dead, when you raised Lazarus from the dead, you said, Father, I thank you that you've already heard me. But I said, Lazarus wasn't raised from the dead when you prayed. You had already prayed before you got to the tomb. I said, Lazarus did not come out of that tomb until you spoke to Lazarus. I said, so there's not one example where you used your faith to pray to God to get God to do, to pray to the Father to get God to do something. I said, you spoke to it. It was horizontal. And so he brought that conversation back up to me yesterday as I was preparing for Jumpstart. And he, I believe, wants me to continue on this. We need to speak the Word of God to situations. We need to learn to speak to things, not about things. And so Mark chapter 11. Hello, everybody. I'm, I just jumped in here fast. Hello, Sister Johnson. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, speak to your body. Body, you are well. You are healthy. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you are healthy. If there has been a sickness in your body, speak to it. I command you to leave my body in Jesus' name. Heart, I command you and I declare that I command or I declare you're strong. Lungs, you're healthy. Lungs, you're strong. Brain, you're healthy. Brain, you're strong. Blood pressure, you're healthy. We had a person come up who had had high blood pressure. Oh, this is a number of years ago. And uh, and they came up and we laid our hands on them when we commanded, we spoke to their blood. We, I, we said this, I speak to your blood, I speak to your circulation system, and I command your blood pressure to go normal. That happened in 2009. And uh, about a year ago, or about two years ago, that person came to me. They had left church, that had moved away. Then they came back and they said, you know, ever since 2009, when you commanded my blood pressure to be normal, he said it went back to normal overnight by the next day. And he said it has been normal ever since. Wow. Wow. I mean, uh, and let me say this to you. That happened with one command under the anointing. They gave us permission to do it under the anointing of the Lord, the leading of the Lord. We did it. But you can speak that. Keep speaking, keep speaking, keep speaking. Keep talking to your body. Keep talking to it. Don't just talk about it. Man, I'm telling you, this is absolutely important that we get what the Spirit of God is saying right now to us, that we can't just be talking about things. We have to be talking to them. Now, Mark chapter 11, verse uh, 11, let's see. Mark chapter 11, verse 20, uh, Verse 12, verses 12 through 14, Jesus came to a fig tree. He found no figs on it. So he answered and said to it, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And then 24 hours later, Peter noticed as they were walking by, Peter noticed that the fig tree, I know Narcissa, amen. Peter said, Jesus, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away from the roots. Now notice that Jesus used his mouth to curse the tree. 
that means you can also use your mouth to bless. And here's the thing about cursing and blessing. There is a time and there is a place for you to use your mouth to curse a thing. That doesn't mean you cuss. doesn't mean you use bad words. But just like Jesus, he spoke to the tree and said, No man will eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And when he spoke those words of death, that tree began to die from the roots up. Do you know that cancer has a root? Those t tumors, tumors have roots. Cancer tumors have roots. Uh, my mother died of stomach cancer many, many years ago, and they said that when they did surgery on her stomach, that she had cancer seeds that were scattered in her stomach. So cancer is a seed, which means it has a root. All right? And so, uh, so we can speak to diseases and they begin immediately to dry up from the root. You can speak to your brain. You can speak to your eyes. Praise God. Amen. Man, this goes on and on and on. Find the, what the Word of God says and begin to speak the Word of God to it. So, uh, Peter was amazed. He said, Jesus, the tree you cursed is withered away. And then Jesus said this. He said, let me tell you guys something. Have faith in God. The Greek literally says, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. All right? Use God's faith. Do faith the way God does faith. And we said yesterday that when God looked out over the darkness, He spoke to the sun. He spoke to the moon. He spoke to the, planta the, the plants. He spoke to the animals and commanded them to come. Amen. God couldn't talk to anybody else and use His faith in anybody else because He is God. So we talk to it not about it. Now, let's look at another example. Here is Luke chapter 7. We're just going to give examples of how Jesus used his faith and spoke two things. Here's Luke chapter 7. Praise God. We're going to jumpstart this, okay? It's going to be awesome. I love this, man. It's going to be awesome because this is what will change your life. Listen, what you're saying about a thing is also what you're saying to a thing. Be careful in your conversations that you're not canceling the Word of God, that you're not canceling what you're saying. Be careful about those things. What your mouth is, your mouth is a powerful, lethal weapon. Amen. Your words work, your mouth works, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, it said here, um, this is the centurion. It says, when he had, this is Luke 7, 1. When he had completed all his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. And a centurion slave who was highly regarded by him was sick and about to die. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and save the life of his servant. When they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, He's worthy for you to grant this to him because he loves our Jewish nation and it was he who built our synagogue. He said, this guy deserves it, you know, how we're always trying to earn something. Um, and then, now, Jesus started on his way with them and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further for I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. For this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Notice, listen, listen, listen carefully. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, Lord, just pray to God and my servant will be healed. But you know what most of us do? We put messages on Facebook saying, pray for this one, pray for that one, pray for this one, pray for that one. Do you know no one asked Jesus to pray for them? Not one sick person came and said, Jesus, please pray to God for me. Please pray that I'll be healed. Not one time. Do you see how far we've missed the mark? And yet I see on Facebook over and over again, so and so sick, please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray. Please pray. But notice what the centurion said. Say the word, speak it horizontally, say it, 
and my servant will be healed the minute you issue the command. Wouldn't it be cool if we would get in line with how faith really works and we were to say on Facebook, I'm speaking to this situation. I'm speaking the word. Speak the word with me. So-and-so has been diagnosed with this. Speak the word. Say the word. Now, understand this. If you're speaking the word and the sick person is speaking death, what they're speaking cancels what you're speaking. You see how, see how slippery that gets on Facebook? You know, pray for them. Well, if I pray for them, but they're saying, well, I'm sicker than a dog and I think I'm going to die. Even Jesus couldn't heal a person that way. He couldn't. He could not. He tried to heal people in his own hometown, and he could not get the power to flow because of their unbelief. So it's a slippery slope, but you should be saying to people, speak the word. This is what has attacked me. I'm declaring this. I'm speaking this. Now speak this word with me. That's how we should be operating. That's why we're not seeing many results. Now, notice what he said. He said, say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come. And he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now, when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him and turned and said to the crowd that was following him, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. Wow! When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. What did Jesus say there? What, what happened? The man said, say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the, the servant in good health. Think about it. They had a conversation. Two men had a conversation. These people had a conversation. Jesus said, you have awesome faith. Here's my question. How did that servant get healed? Because of what Jesus said? Or because of what the centurion said? The centurion said, say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, you have awesome faith. And the person was healed. It's what the centurion said. <laughs> and Jesus said, dude, you're not even a Jew. And you just tapped into the secret of talking to it. <laughs> That's awesome. Amen. And so soon afterward, he went to a city called Nain. The centurion. Jesus just agreed with the centurion. I know it's a wow. Jesus just said, that's awesome, dude. What you just said, that's, you have great faith. What you just said is coming to pass. I agree with you. I agree with you. See, if people get on Facebook and say, uh, this is what I've been diagnosed with, but here's what I'm saying. I'm saying, Matthew 8, 17, he took my infirmities, he bore my sicknesses. I'm saying he took my infirmities, he bore my sicknesses. Do you agree with me? And, and others would, then others could say, we agree with what you just said. He took your infirmities. He bore your sicknesses. Instead of saying, pray to God, we should be saying, I agree with what you just said. That's when we will see results. But we've been religious about it. We, we, we are using tradition, and the tradition of men makes the word of God of no effect. And I don't want the word. We can't afford in this day and age with the deadly, as deadly as it has become, not for us, we're not, it's not deadly for us, but as, as twisted as, as things have become, we've got to act on the word of God. So the centurion is the one that got his own servant healed. And Jesus just agreed with him. Now, soon afterwards, he went into a city. This is Luke 7, 11. He went into a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him and accompanied by a large crowd. Now, as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd from the city was with her. So here's a dead person, a widow, her son has died. That means her livelihood's gone. Her son would be the one that would make the, the living, okay? 
When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bears came to a halt, and he said, he didn't pray, he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. He didn't pray to God. He didn't ask God to raise him from the dead. He just said, Oh God, please raise this man. Oh God, this man, you got to raise him up. The Lord just needs him. No, he stopped the coffin and he spoke to this dead young man. He said, Young man, I say to you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak. And G Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear gripped them all. And they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet is risen among us. And God has visited his people. Amen. Again, the way that Jesus operated his faith was by talking to the situation. Talking to the person. All right. That's exactly how faith works every single time is that we talk to the situation not about it so let's go back say this out loud I speak the word only I speak the word of God to my body I speak the word of God to my mind I speak the word of God to my finances I speak the word of God over my family and to my family. Amen. Praise God. Now, notice Mark chapter 11. We got a guy that's rudely blowing the uh, area around me. He could have gone somewhere else. He could have gone to another place, but we're not going to stop. We'll give him a chance to finish doing what he's doing and we'll move on. Praise God. Can you tell that the devil doesn't want you to hear this? This is a really large park and there's a dozen of the places that this person could go to right now and they know that I'm recording. They looked at me, they went ahead and turned on their blower. Now, Mark 11, 23, Jesus said after he cursed the fig tree, he said, have faith in God. Have faith in, yeah, not today, Jana. I'm not moved by it. Jesus said, have faith in God, or it is very rude. He knew what I was doing. It's okay. I'm unmoved. If that's all the devil's got, I'm unmoved. He said, have faith in God, or have the faith of God. And then notice what he said. For verily I say to you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he'll have whatever he says. So the number one way that faith is exercised is by the words that we speak to situations, not what we pray about situations. So here's my encouragement from the Lord. Don't pray about it. Talk to it. Just like Jesus did with this centurion, just like the centurion did for his own servant, and just like Jesus did with this widow son the son of the widow of Nain, he spoke to a dead man. He spoke to a dead man, told him to get up. Speak to your body. Speak to your mind. Speak to your brain. Speak to your heart. Speak to your finances. Praise God. Praise God. You know, one time, uh, Jesus, uh, Brother Hagin was praying, and then I, well, Let's say this out loud, then I'll tell this story. Um, one time, Brother Hagen, uh, well, let's say this. I'm speaking to it, and it is obeying my mouth. I'm speaking the word to every situation. I'm not praying about it. I'm speaking to it. 
Amen. Now, we're going to close. The Spirit of God brought up a story that I heard many, many years ago that He told me to share with you right now, so I'm going to do it. All right, because you just saw something happen that was prophetic. You just saw something happen that was very prophetic. Number one, this this person that just did this, this worker, he has a he has a dozen or two dozen other shelters he could have gone to before he came to this one. This one wasn't even that dirty. He looked at me. He saw that I was recording. He got off. He fired up his his blower anyway. Now I'm not saying that he was being malicious. What I'm saying is he was being used by the devil. Okay, without even knowing it. Here's the story, Jumpstart Nation. This is how important what we're talking about right now matters, that you're supposed to use your authority, use the Word of God, and speak to situations. Satan does not want you to do this. He doesn't want you to do this. Now, here's the story. Brother Hagin, Kenneth E. Hagin, my spiritual daddy, went home to be with the Lord. He was a prophet. He was praying, and the Lord appeared to him. He actually knelt down into like a cloud, and when this cloud and this Holy Spirit cloud enveloped him, he was kneeling by a kitchen table. The Lord Jesus appeared to him and began to teach him about uh, authority, about speaking to things. Now that I'm remembering that, wow! And uh, as he was teaching this demon, it was like a, Brother Hagen said, it's like a, a body of a monkey, a body of an imp with the sort of a, a twisted a, a man's face. He said that little imp-like demon jumped in between him and Jesus and began to make put this big cloud of smoke, this big smoke screen, and he began to say real loud, yakety, yakety, yak. Yakety, 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 yak. And it was so high and shrill that Jesus could no longer hear what Jesus was saying. He could, he could hear Jesus' voice, but he couldn't understand the words. And this, this cloud, uh, he couldn't see Jesus. And Brother Hagin, in this vision, was like, well, why isn't Jesus doing something about this? Why isn't Jesus putting a stop to this? And this went on for four or five minutes. Finally, uh, Brother Hagin, he didn't know anything about his authority at that point. This was back in the 40s or 50s. He just finally got so aggravated, he said, I command you to shut up in Jesus' name. When he said that, the spirit just bang, hit the ground like a sledgehammer hit him, and the cloud disappeared, and he, this little imp demon just just rolled, ran around, ran around, whimpered around like a whimpered dog, and this just scampered off. Jesus stopped what he was saying, and he looked at Brother Hagin, and he said, I just want you to know, if you hadn't have done anything about that, I couldn't have. And Brother Hagin, Brother Hagin said, I took my ear, and I said, Lord, I... I I, I don't think I heard you right. You said you wouldn't have. And Brother Jesus uh, uh, Jesus said, no. He said, I'm telling you, if you hadn't have done something about this, I couldn't have. Third time, Brother Hagin said, Lord, I don't think I'm hearing you right. I don't think that, I don't think I heard you right. You said you wouldn't have. And very sternly, very sternly, Jesus put his finger at Brother Hagin has said, no, I said I couldn't have, and the vision disappeared. Brother Hagin now realizes he's kneeling uh, by a kitchen chair at the kitchen table, and he's kind of back, back in the natural again. And uh, during that vision, during that vision, he did say this. He said, uh, Lord Jesus, he said, I, I can't accept this vision as from God. I can't accept it as from you unless you can give me scriptures to back up what you just said because you just said if I did not take authority over that demon you could not have you didn't say you wouldn't you said you couldn't he said uh, yeah he said I won't just give you three I'll give you four and so tomorrow on jump start I'm going to give you those four verses listen if you don't talk to it God can't do anything about it that's in the scriptures we'll show it to you tomorrow if you don't talk to it if you don't speak the word to situations God can't deal with it because he gave you the authority. All right, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Your words matter. Speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. Talk to it. Somebody needs to hear this. Our shares have been low, but I believe someone, if we'll just share
share the button. God will get it to who needs it. Somebody needs to know they can speak to that COVID-19 in their body and command it to leave. They can speak it. They can speak to their finances. They can speak to their jobs. There are people walking out. Medical professionals yesterday walked off the job because they're not going to be told by a tyrannical government what to do. They need to know how to speak to food, speak to finances and command it to come. They need to know how to speak to jobs and command them to come. Brothers and sisters, Jumpstart Nation, we have to walk in the principle of authority. We've got to learn to walk in this now. We can't do this in the natural. This is a prophetic, this whole week is a prophetic message from the Lord. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. Share, share, share. I will put this on YouTube and share the link. All right. God bless you. See you tomorrow.